hi everybody how are you hope you're doing well hope you're having a blessed day um so i have a word for you guys um i'll be recording many today um this week's kind of crazy um but um i do have words to release that uh the lord wants me uh to put out and so i will do that okay so this one, um, also there's another word um, that kind of goes with this one. I thought about joining them, but then Holy Spirit was like, no, do them separately. Um, so if this one ends up being for you, uh, be on the lookout for the ones following this word because more than likely it's for you too, okay? Um, so in this dream, and when I had this dream, I'm like, what? That's so weird. And most of the time, I have no idea what the dreams mean until Holy Spirit gives me revelation or he leads me, um, right, to what it means. Um, sometimes I know right away and sometimes I'm like, I have no idea. And this one was one of those where I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. Um, in this dream, I had it January 12th, 2024. Okay. And in this dream, I was staying, it was like this property. It was a big property and there was like a main house, like a big house, a main house. And I was staying the night in this, um, like a little room or like a little apartment something detached from the main house but still on the property so it was like separate right still on the same property but separate from like the main big house so i was staying um the night in this this room this separate room this separate building place it was like a small room right so I was uh, staying the night there. And then um, when it became morning, I was going to leave. But then um, this woman and this man, the woman I recognized, and her name means bringer of victory. Bringer of victory and true image okay and the man i have no idea who he was so i can't even look up a name or anything like that um and so when i was going to leave i was going to leave already it was already day and they come in and um they say to uh take the clothes and I'm like, what? Because this place wasn't mine. It was like I was only staying there the night, right? So, but they were telling me to take, like, the clothes. And I'm like, okay. Like, that didn't make sense to me in the dream. And when I woke up, it didn't make sense to me in real life either as to why they wanted me to take the clothes. And so, literally, like, we end up taking out all of the clothes out of the drawers everywhere in that room like it was like everything was full with like clothes and there was like the, these um old clothes um that apparently weren't needed right and so it was like take them like or get rid of them or something like and i was just like okay so uh as all the clothes was out and you know we're kind of uh, sorting through it and stuff um what stood out to me were these sleeves they were like sleeves that you can uh like separate from like the main shirt it was just sleeves that you can just put on i 
if you know what I'm talking about, good. If you don't, I'm sorry, you might want to Google it. Um, there's sleeves that you, you can probably just wear with any outfit or anything, right? They're just detachable sleeves that you could just put on and combine, right, with any outfit. And so these sleeves stood out to me. I was like really looking at them in the dream and they were green they were green sleeves okay and um that was it that was it there's another part of the like it kept going but for now i'm just gonna share that and so i didn't know what this meant until um, on Sunday, I was listening to a sermon. I am, I have to, I must um, link it in the description box, okay? So if you're led to listen to this sermon, go for it, okay? Follow the Holy Spirit. And so in this sermon, um, they were talking about uh, Jeremiah 38. Jeremiah 38. And what happened here in this chapter, and I've heard this story before, but it just didn't, I don't know, right? But this is how God led me, right, to the revelation of this dream. So in Jeremiah 38, uh, Jeremiah is a prophet, right? He's a prophet of God, and he was told to speak, and he would speak uh, what God would say, mind you, God told him, I'm going to tell you what to say and nobody's going to listen to you. And so just think about that. That's probably just a word in itself. Um, yeah, he was told, I'm going to tell you what to say and you say it, but just know that nobody's going to listen to you. Okay. So this was, so he wasn't very light basically right nobody really liked him um and so here in this chapter it's titled from the pit to the palace okay so these men they get jeremiah the prophet and they uh put him in a pit in a cistern right and it doesn't even have water it's kind of full of mud right so they put him in there and they um by now if you've watch the sermon then you know what I'm talking about um so they put him down in the pit with mud right it was full of mud and he sinks into the mud and they leave him there to die basically right but then there's this man um who is um like a servant of the the king right um and he goes to the king his name is where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Ebed Melek. Ebed, Ebed Melek. Um, he went to the king and he told him what they did to Jeremiah. They're like, what they did is evil. Like they they left him there to die. And so then the king tells him, take 30 men with you and take him out. Okay. So then he gets 30 men, but before he leaves the palace, he stops by um, the treasury. He stops by the treasury and what he gets from there under the treasury in the king's palace from which he took some old clothes and rags, okay, like in the dream, right? Um, these he let down with ropes to Jeremiah in the cistern. Epic Melon, Mele, Ebed, oh, his name. Let's call him, what do we call him? Ebed Melek, I don't know. Uh, the Ethiopian said to Jeremiah, use these old clothes and rags as padding between your armpits and the ropes. After, Jer after Jeremiah had done this, they pulled him up, okay? And so the, the old clothes, the old rags were to serve as a cushion, as a padding so that when they pulled him out, when they wrapped the rope around him, um, the rope wouldn't dig into his skin and hurt him. Okay. And so um, 
yeah this this completely reminded me of this dream i was like oh my goodness um so they pulled him out okay and so what god is saying with this um is that you're about and in the sermon oh my goodness in the sermon um the pastor was saying um they're about to pull you out they're about to pull you out and so god confirmed that sermon with this dream for me and now god's having me release it to you guys okay so what god is saying is that help is coming help is coming if you are in a pit if you have been in a dark season in a hard season mind you i really feel god really put it on my heart to say this there is a difference when somebody's going through a hard season um when it's a process when god is processing you right um and then when you're under judgment you have to know the difference if you're under judgment and you're going through a tough time or if God has put you through a process of refinement, of pruning, of like crushing for that oil. And one way to know the difference, um, and God really put it on me to say this, okay, because some people, all it's going to take for you to come out of that judgment is to repent. Okay, so God is calling some of you to repent. Okay, um, when it's a season, uh, when, uh, when you're being processed, when it's a process, when you're being refined, um, it's uh, God's grace is there. You will see his hand, you will see him, he will be very present in the process okay you will see his grace you will see it and when it's judgment you won't see the grace you're gonna be wondering where he is okay that's judgment that's the difference between a process that god is refining and pruning and and really doing a deep work in you and then there's uh like judgment when um you're like i don't know where god is i don't know like okay he's really taking this message okay he really wants me to talk about this so and the reason is because some of you need to repent some of you have confused judgment with a process and god sent me here today to tell some someone somebody some someone it's not a process okay it's judgment and all you need to do is repent he's calling you guys to repent um repent and 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 turn um i know the word says uh i will never leave you i will never forsake you but somebody who has wandered away from the father if you look at the wow holy spirit oh my goodness if you look at the the prodigal son the prodigal son left the father's house and the father did not go after him okay so you need to repent and return repent and return to the father's house and as soon as you get close enough the father will receive you there is mercy there is grace so if you're wondering where he is you need to repent okay and if you're going through a process you know he's there he is there he has equipped you he has given you the grace and continues to give you the grace to endure to persevere okay like he really wanted me to to talk about that this is way a little bit off topic but it's necessary right he wanted to talk about that um so yeah so he's calling you guys he wants you to come back he's calling you to to repentance okay and as far as wow okay he's having me explain certain things okay so um as far as um when uh jesus the shepherd right he leaves the 99 to go get the one 
that is in like the context of a shepherd. So there are some uh, people that God has entrusted with his sheep, right? And these sheep, there's some sheep, some of God's sheep, his, his children who have been misled, who have been led astray by uh, a shepherd, right? And in there, I think it's in Ezekiel where God says that he will uh, take back his sheep from those shepherds who have led his, um, who have led his sheep astray, who have made them wander. And that's when he leaves the 99 to go get that one. Okay, so it's like different scenarios, different things. Um, so when, a shepherd has been uh, leading his sheep astray, that's when he goes and, and gets, uh, leaves the 99 and go, goes to get that one, okay? But as far as needing to repent, um, you by choices that you've made and, and things like that, that have, um, that you have made and 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 you walked away from God and it was one choice after another and it was and before you know it you're like where is God right God is calling you to repent to turn back and and return to the father okay mercy is waiting for you grace is 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 waiting for you okay and this um is very humbling to acknowledge where you went wrong to acknowledge the choices that you made to acknowledge right that it was by your own doing and to come back and to return okay um like the prodigal son he had to come to his senses for him to to make his way back so sometimes god will go after you when you have been led astray by others right and then uh, sometimes where where it's our own doing, we wander off on our own. Um, and to those, God really he he loves you, okay, and he wants you to repent. He wants you to turn back to the Father, okay. Um, yeah. So back to this. I don't know where I left off. Um. So Jeremiah was in the pit. Uh, they took him out. And um, okay, so the purpose, what God is saying um, of the rags and the clothes is that you're receiving, uh, you're in the process of being lifted out of this pit. You're in the process of being lifted up and out of this pit, okay? You are getting those rags, those clothes receive them don't look at them like what is this this isn't like the promised land this isn't like it's baby steps to get there okay receive these things it's a process to be let out okay receive the help don't turn the help away okay and then there's gonna be a rope there's gonna be a rope and this rope is your way out okay you're gonna be pulled out and god even confirmed the whole rope thing for me um oh and also um because they sent 30 men you don't need 30 men to pull out a man okay you don't need 30 men but the way the holy spirit explained it to me is because he has had me release uh words with the number 30 before and 30 represents the age of maturity in which somebody is able to uh, mentally and physically do difficult things. It is a time of maturity. So here, what God is sending you are mature people in the spirit. These are mature um, men, mature people that are sent there to help on mission on purpose to help you okay they're they're going to help you okay um 
yeah and so I need to refocus because that totally he totally went in another direction here um, with that I mean all glory to God right um, but yes, he's he's lifting you up. He's giving you these rags, and that was in the dream. They wanted me to take these these rags, these these clothes. Well, they weren't rags in the dream. They were um, old clothes. They had no need for them. So here, they're like, here you take them. As I was leaving this place of isolation, okay, it was a place of isolation away from the main house, still on the property. And mind you that after they took out Jeremiah um, they pulled him out Jeremiah remained in the guards quarters so he was led um, on property right where the king was um, where um, the guards were okay so this is God is taking you out of the pit onto a, a good place and it's full of protection and the king tells him this as Adonai lives who gave us our lives I will not put you to death nor will I hand you over to these men who want to put you to death you will never go through what you went through once you're out of the pit you are out once you're out of that process once you endured once you persevered once you are out you are out okay and you will be in this new place okay and the next part of the dream oh and the green sleeves the green represents new life new life it's eternal life okay green um fruitful multiplication production reproduction um that's what green means and the sleeves it's like it's like a covering right and um it's like um because these in the dream it was like i wanted them for myself it's like we don't have to give these away so what god is doing is that now that you received the help you will be that help for others okay you will be that help for others the process that he had you go through served a purpose okay as any process with God it's never wasted okay any season is never wasted okay um so whatever you went through now you're going to be able to help others and pull others out okay because all of that clothes it was way too much it was way it could help way more than one person you know and so as you are leaving this place of isolation, this temporary place, and now going into the main house, because what happened is after that, I went into the main house and there was an office, an office in this house. And um, there was a dinner being held in the office. Okay. And it was only a special invite. You had to be specially invited like to attend this dinner in this office. And I was there and I remember thinking like in the dream, like, how did I get here? How did I even get invited? Like how, like, it was like I just stumbled into this place, but I had an invite, you know? And that's the same thing that happened in the, in the scripture with Jeremiah. It was like he was led to a place uh, of safety and now he had the king's protection he wasn't gonna hurt Jeremiah or hand him over to anybody that was going to hurt him okay so he was completely safe and so in this next season it's like you're going to uh, experience this new kind of rest where you don't have to fear anything you have overcome 
You have overcome. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You have overcome. Wow. That's Holy Spirit. You have overcome. That's really specific for somebody. You have overcome. Okay. And what you went through, you don't have to go through it again. You overcame, which means you conquered it. And what used to bother you, what used to um, press your buttons, what used to make you react, what made, all of that, it, it has no effect on you anymore. Like, no more. You're, you, you're, you have this new confidence which is faith, confidence, confidence in God, um, that's faith, your faith has grown, you have grown in your faith, wow, thank you Holy Spirit, and also recently, um, I saw two movies where God really highlighted the rope, the rope, okay, and um, it was the movie Noah, and that's been really, that's really relevant in the season that we're in right now. And so once the water, in the movie, once the waters came, Noah was outside the ark, but he was holding on. He was clinging to a rope. Thank you, Holy Spirit. This is reminding me of a dream that I had where I was holding on to a rope. Okay. And then I was helping people up out of like flooded waters okay um wow wow that really ties into this because like he just said now you're going to be able to help others now that you are out now you're going to be able to help others and god is saying wow don't reject the help that he is sending do not reject the help that he is sending. You need to humble yourselves to receive help. Don't let pride get in the way. Don't let arrogance get in the way. Don't be like, oh no, I'm fine, I'm good. Like, no, if God sends somebody, you receive. Receive, okay? Be humble and receive. Um, wow, thank you, Holy Spirit. And then this other movie, uh, it's called Damsel. And literally this girl in this movie got thrown into a pit. Got thrown into a pit. And she was like, you guys need to watch that movie. It's called Damsel. Um, and there was a rope. There was a time where, because she was betrayed by her own father. Okay. Uh, basically sold by her father. Um, and he regretted it and he went back to save her uh, but in the process he died right and um, his last words were um, go up the rope and I was like oh my gosh Holy Spirit right away was like highlighted that and um, the rope is there okay take hold of the help she still had to, and, she, and the rope was there for some time, but she didn't know it was there. She, like her dad had to tell her like, take hold of the rope, climb the rope, get out of here. So the tool is in place, everything is in place, okay? And God sent me here to tell somebody, take hold of the rope. However it may look like God has sent you help. Take hold of the rope. Receive the help. Humble yourselves. Okay. This is your way out of the pit. Okay. This is your way out. Okay. And God is taking you to a new land with new opportunities. You're not even going to know how you ended up where God is leading you next. Okay. And, you're, and your instruction is to now help others. You have to help others, okay? And that is it, I think. Let me see. Mm. Yes. That's it. Okay, guys. 
So I'll have the scripture in the description box. And if you'd like to sew, you may do so. That'll be it. God bless you. Bye.